two weeks testing drivers on track map. And I'm not about to let all that data go to waste. So let's head outside and check out the best drivers for 2020. What the hell are they doing? I thought you might need some help. Surely you can't test all these on your own. <sighs> at least get them out one at once. Is that a yes? So here's how this is going to work. I've been custom fit into eight drivers and I'm going to give each one a score out of five on looks, feel, distance and dispersion. The driver with the highest score will be the winner. Pretty simple, right? So let's get on with it. I like the look of the smaller head. I love the, uh, the face and the look and this shape of the uh, driver at the back. Nice. I think the comments were actually more positive than the scores there. Personally, I love the deeper, more compact shape. The styling is classic without being bland, and the orange is bright and bold, so I'm giving this a five. I'd say the sound like, doesn't sound as quite as high pitched as the epic. That sounded a lot better. Yeah, like that. Yeah, nice sound off the face as well. Loads of comments on the acoustics here, and rightly so. Callaway have done a fantastic job of improving this for this model, making a pure strike feel that much better, so it's another 5 from me. The Maverick actually produced the joint longest drive of this test at 236.8 yards, but ultimately it ended up 4th on average driving distance. But it wasn't this that impressed me most, it was actually the dispersion and especially on kind of off centre strikes, the launch angle and the quality of the shots was just really high. I really feel like I can hit more fairways when I have this club in the bag. I've known Cobra in the past to be quite bright, colourful, so I was quite surprised that it was black actually. I was expecting like red or something like that, but it, I think design wise it looks nice. It's slightly bigger. That's lovely. Overall, I really do like this design, especially the shape and the colouring. But I would say there is quite a lot going on with kind of the infinity face, the ridges, the texture and the colour. So I'm going to give this a 4 for looks. Not sure for me, the sound is quite up there with the others. That was quite nice. That was quite nice. It felt a little bit more firm off the face. Personally, I wasn't quite sure on the feel of this. It felt quite heavy to move around and also a bit dull off the face, so I'm going to give it a 3. I would say distance-wise, I actually struggled a little bit, kind of maxing out in the mid-220s, but I would say my, my dispersion was excellent. And I'm not just talking about left-to-right dispersion, I'm also talking about front-to-back. Playing off scratch, you could almost argue this is more important than hitting kind of that one pure shot a little bit further because... If I'm on a par 5 tee and I've got to fly over one bunker but stop it before another, I've got the ability to do that and I've got the control of knowing how far it's going to go consistently. You try the tightless? Like the look. Reasonably pear shaped, I would say. I'm not surprised at all by the high scores here. This is probably my favourite looking club in the test and the reason why I'm giving it a 5. That felt really nice actually. That's awesome, yeah. My ball speed's gone up by 5 miles an hour. That felt solid. Quite like the looks of that. 
I do really like the feel of the TS2, but overall I would say on off-centre strikes it does feel slightly duller than some of the others in this test, so I'm going to give it a 4 for feel. So my longest shot with this club was 231 yards, and I was happy with the distance overall, but I would say I would have liked to see my front-to-back dispersion be a little bit tighter. Overall my left-to-right dispersion I was happy with, and also I would say it was very neutral down the target line, which I was really pleased with. I do think they've been a little bit harsh here. The face with the screws in is really cool, but I think the low score in here comes from the kind of grey colouring on the top, which I don't personally like. Now, this driver does come in a black finish option as well, and I have seen that and it was really nice, and I much preferred that visual, but they've sent us a grey for this test, so I'm going to give it a 3 for looks. So the overall weighting of this club felt quite light, but then the head felt quite heavy when I was moving it through my swing. Now this might be due to the shaft I've picked and the way it's being built up, but because of this I'm going to give it a 3 for feel. So my best drive with the Prowler was 229.1 yards, and I'd say in general the distance I was pretty happy with. I found I had a really consistent shot shape, but I would say the dispersion was slightly right bias. Now this was a good thing for me because I hit a draw and if anything I worry about that big left miss so it took that option out and just stabilised and brought my dispersion more central. Very different on the top, quite jazzy, there's a lot going on but I actually don't mind that. Compared to the uh, M5 and M6 I think it looks nicer at address. Personally, I'm surprised by this result because I think TaylorMade have nailed it with the looks of this club this year. Obviously, it doesn't look traditional, but I don't really think that's what you expect from a TaylorMade club. For me, I really love the new colouring, especially the chalk on the top. So, personally, I'm going to give this a 5 for looks. Oh, that's the best feeling, solid hit. Yeah, I like how that's performed. I think they're pretty on the mark here. This is a great feeling golf club, so I'm going to give it a 4.5 for feel. So you probably won't find it surprising that this is one of the longest drivers in this test. I had my third longest shot of the whole test with this club at 234.7 yards. And my average distance was high with this club too, over 226 yards. But what I did find was my dispersion struggled a little bit. So both my front to back and my left to right dispersion were a bit higher with this than I would have liked. I also found my miss was slightly left biased as well, so for someone who was already a drawer of the ball, that wasn't necessarily favourable. I really like that design actually. It's different to what I was expecting. I think it looks pretty attractive. I'd say this is the uh, most attractive driver, except the title is so far. I'm not surprised by the score at all. Wilson have done a really great job of creating a simple classic design here, so I'm going to give it a 4. It's probably not a brand that people would uh, have to choose first of all, but I think that performed just as well as most of the other ones I've tried so far. It's quite easy to hit. Not nice off the face. Obviously the shaft's too light for me, but I think it feels pretty nice. Yeah, I like that. The lightweight nature of this club made it really easy to swing, and it also gave you great feedback on strikes. So I'm giving this a 4 for feel. So the D7 was tied with the Maverick for the longest individual drive of the test, but it was also the longest driver by average driving distance at 227.4 yards. Now this probably wasn't the club that you thought was going to be longest in this test, but it actually performed consistently really well for distance. Now I think this was down to the lightweight nature of the club, it just made it really easy to swing, I could get my club head speed up. I would say my dispersion was slightly right biased and wasn't as tight as some of the other clubs.
go with the Mizuno. I like the color actually. I like it and the color theme. It's very smart. Really nice though that. Along with the rest of my family, I'm a fan of the classic paired back look, so I'm giving this a four. Oh, nice off the face, lights off. My ball speed's gone up. Mizuno are known for feel, so don't expect any difference with their drivers. A solid struck drive really gives you a buttery feel, so I'm giving this a 4.5. So this was actually the third longest driver in the test, averaging at 224.5 yards. And it was actually the driver that had the longest drive for my worst shot, if that even makes any sense. So some seriously impressive front to back dispersion. The right to left dispersion was solid too, but I would say it had a slight right bias. I currently play with a ping driver, so I do like them. I quite like the design, I think that's quite cool with the lines. So I really do like the shape, colouring and overall styling of this club, but I would say in general I kind of prefer a gloss finish on top, so for that reason I'm going to give this a 4. That felt nice off the face. Yeah, I like that. Typical solid thing. I could put that in the bag, I think that's good. I'm not sure Georgia was testing the same club as the rest of us here. Personally, this was my favourite for feel, so I'm going to give this a 5. So this was probably a middle of the pack in terms of distance, but that's because in my fitting, I specifically put an emphasis on wanting to improve my dispersion. Now this shows Ping did a really great job, because when we're looking at dispersion in terms of left to right miss, front to back depth, or even skew relative to target line, when we combine all these factors, Ping came out top for dispersion. You might have spotted the winner by now, but first let's talk about the winner from each category. The Titleist won on looks, closely followed by the Maverick and the Sim. For feel, the Ping was my favourite, followed by the ST200 from Mizuno and the Maverick. For total distance, longest drive and front to back drive dispersion, the Wilson was your winner, followed by the Mizuno and then the TaylorMade Sim Max. Looking at front to back and left to right miss, as well as shot skew relative to target line, the ping was your winner for dispersion, followed closely by the Cobra Speed Zone and then the Callaway Maverick. So the overall winner, with a possible 19 points out of 20, and the club I'm going to be putting in my bag for 2020, is the Callaway Maverick driver. This snuck to victory over the runner-up, the Ping G410, which was then followed closely by the Sim Max, the TS2 and the ST200. So there you have it folks, the best drivers for 2020 from National Club Golfer. If you've enjoyed this, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you head over to our social media channels for more content coming soon. <laughs> Sorry. I'm <laughs> <laughs>